In this tutorial, we are going to use a HTML file stored in Google Drive, like this little goat HTML here. And we're going to use that to generate a web app, a dialog, and a sidebar in Google Sheets. Now, take note, you could also use the same approach with Google Docs and Google Slides. So let's get started. Over on my right hand side here is the bound file for this Google Sheet here. Now this could also be a standalone file if you're just using a web app, but I've bound it to the sheet so I can display the dialogue from the HTML file in our Google Drive and also the sidebar in a moment too. So let me just hide this files column here quickly with a bit of F12 magic. Okay, now we can see a bit better. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create a function called get HTML file. So function get HTML file. So the first thing we need is the file ID. Now we can run for searches for the file ID, but it's going to be more performant for you to actually have the file ID for the HTML file accessible inline in your code. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to create a constant variable called HTML file ID. And that is going to be equal to the file ID that we need. Now yours is going to be different, particularly if you're going to play along. And if you want to play along, you can grab a copy of the starter sheet in the link in the description below. Oh, and you can also grab a copy of the starter HTML too. So let's go back over to our starter HTML. And we will just right click and we will click on share here and copy the link for share. And then we're going to chuck this in here, control shift V. And we just want the ID. We don't need the whole URL. Although I suppose you could, but I just like the ID. Cool. We might even put the URL in comments above just to be good. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to grab this file and create a blob of this file. We're going to create a blob and create text, but we'll just call this blob for convenience sake. So const blob is going to be equal to, now we're going to grab this HTML file. So we'll say drive app to use the drive app class or API, and we'll just chain a bunch of methods together. So we'll put them on new lines for convenience. And the first one we need is to get file by ID. And we've got the ID, which is HTML file ID. Cool. And then we want the we want to get the blob of that file. So get blob. And then once we have the blob, we want to get the data of the blob as a string. So get data as string. Cool. All right. So once we get to this stage, what does that look like? So we'll say console.log blob. We'll hit save. Okay. So we're going to hit uh, run now. Or get HTML file, run through authorization. Okay, and you can see now our HTML file has been loaded into our script. What do we do next? What we'll actually do is return this HTML service because we'll call this function from other functions here to make it reusable. So we'll say return HTML service dot create HTML output. So just the output here, we're not doing it from file in this case. Uh, and then we want to add in a blob here. Okay, let's put in some extra data here. So we'll change some stuff. Uh, we'll add in some meta tags just to make things uh, work for us. Probably the viewport one. So we'll say uh, viewport, just so it's accessible on other devices, comma, width is equal to device dash width and the initial scale 
is equal to one. Cool. And then we'll also add in a, we'll set the width, not entirely useful for a web app, but this will definitely be useful for our dialog and sidebar, right? Or well, mostly our dialog. So we'll set the width to 500 pixels and we'll set the height to 500 pixels and then we'll set the title to Yagi's example cool bananas okay so that's all set up ready to go it's not going to generate anything at the moment but let's first start off with a what do you think web app so what do we need to make a web app? Well, we need to return a HTML file from a do get function. So let's say function do get. And then we're just going to return our get HTML file. Done. Is it safe? Okay, so to deploy our web app, we're just going to go up to deploy here, new deployment. Uh, we're going to execute as me who has access, just me. We're going to be selfish. It's all about us at the moment. We're going to hit deploy and just hit our copy here. And then let's uh, copy that URL and put that in a new tab and see what happens. Okay, so we've got a little screen here, a little jumping goat mosing around the place. Very fun. Cool. So let's go back here. We'll hit done now. And how would we apply this to a dialog perhaps? So we'll make sure that this is back into our dialog screen here. Um, the first thing we need to do is to create an on open to create a menu. So we'll say function on open. And then we'll say const, const ui is equal to spreadsheet app dot get ui and then we'll say ui dot create menu we'll say yagi here for our menu name and we'll change some stuff to it we'll add an item and what's that item going to be first one we'll say uh, modal dialog i'll even make spell it in american without the gue you're welcome and then we will call that function show modal and let's repeat that so uh, sh control shift arrow down or command if you're on a bit of a mac and uh, let's next one's going to be sidebar and we'll say show sidebar Cool. And let's create those two functions very quickly. So function show modal. Oh, mode A. Modal. There we go. Cool. And what do we need to do here? So all we need to do here is say const HTML is going to be equal to our get HTML file, which is a function. And then we're going to say spreadsheet app get ui new line chain to it we'll say show modal dialog uh, it takes two arguments first one is going to be the html file so html and then the title which is yagi's example now all we need to do is just make a copy of this one hit control c go down a bit control v Change this to show sidebar. Uh, and then we'll change this one all together. We'll put in a period here. And we'll say show sidebar, this one here. And we don't need to put a title in here. We just need to put in HTML. Hit save. Cool. So I'll put a little space in here so it holds this. Uh, when I refresh this screen, it's not going to delete it. Uh, and let's go ahead and refresh. Let's hit cancel there to maintain it. And drag this over a bit so we can see. Oh, maybe a bit more. 
Oh, one thing. The reason why that's not working is because we forgot something. We need to build the UI, don't we? So add to UI. There we go. Hit save again. Maybe put in a cheeky save so that it doesn't go away. And let's refresh this. Cool. Now Yagi's appeared up here. All right. So let's have a look at our modal dialog. Yeah, let's authorize it. Of course. Wonderful. And do it again once it's all authorized. Okay. And then our little script that we found that's in here. This bad boy is now running in here for us. Okay. And of course, same in the sidebar. Oh, show sidebar. We did something evil here. Oh, sidbar. That's probably why. Sidebar. Let's hit safe. Let's do dismiss that. Uh, that means we'll have to refresh this again, which is okay. Cool. Now let's show the sidebar. Cool. And there's our little goat jumping around again too, as we try and follow him. Awesome. Okay. So what is this used for? So I often use this when I'm rebuilding HTML files for a, for a dialogue or a web app. Um, what I mean by this is that I might have uh, a number of different HTML files that I have saved. And instead of building it at the time that the user opens up the web app, which can slow the initial process down, I pre-build them based on a time trigger if I can, and then combine those files together during that uh, time series and into one single file and that one single file is then ready for the user to open it up as need be improving the, the initial performance of the file so please let me know how you think you might use this in the future or in your own projects i'd be interested to see how it goes and have fun playing with the little jumping goat if you've enjoyed this tutorial please hit that like button and if you want to see more tutorials like this subscribe until next time